Welcome to another Power Monkey podcast where we chat with the best in the world about what they do. I'm your host, Dave Durante, with my co-host, Chad Vaughn, and on today's episode, we have Austin Maliolo. Austin is an OG of the CrossFit community. He's been around for well over a decade, actually closer to 15 years involved in the sport, having had basically every role you possibly can have. He's been an affiliate owner. He's been on L1 staff for over 10 years, having coached over 400 L1s. That's right, you heard that correctly. He has also been an athlete at the highest level, having finished in the top 10 as both an individual athlete and as part of a team. And now he has a new position with CrossFit HQ as the director of U.S. Gym Operations. He is also unveiling the new CAP program, the CrossFit affiliate programming piece. We talk about all of these things, how involved he's been as both as both an athlete and now uh, having a more prominent role within CrossFit HQ to make sure that coaches, owners, and members all have better resources in terms of taking CrossFit to the next level moving forward. Love talking with Austin. He was actually my L1 coach when I took mine over a decade ago. Love having him on. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. Well, Austin, how you doing, man? Thanks for uh, taking the time to be with, be with us today. Oh, thank you. I'm doing well. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's been a while since I think we all uh, had a chance to sit down and talk. Where are you... Uh, where you are right now? Are you still in the Boston area? Yeah, yeah, it has been a while, but yeah, still in the the Boston area, just outside of Boston. So, um, it's, uh, it's it. This is the best time of the year for the Boston area. So it's it's there's no winter, and you know it's it's a it's a good summer. So I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's been since the old training. Well, you ground. know, we. I was just gonna say, I think it's been since Go the ahead, old training ground days since I've seen Austin. Um, I don't even remember how many years ago that was now. I. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's right. You know, and it's funny, I was talking to, um, you know, my, my buddy, you know, Connor Murphy, which, you know, both of whom, you know, you know, and um, we were just chatting about the training grounds and just, you know, that was such a special moment of, you know, of time. And, and for those that don't know what the training grounds, you know, is or was, it was just a, a camp really, you know, we, of all the athletes that got to the CrossFit games, we all, you know, for a week or two, we all hung out and we worked out, brought the best coaches in, in the world, you know, uh, of, of which both of you were there at certain points. It's, um, we've always talked about how to recreate it, but it, that the space in the old Reebok world headquarters, mm -hmm. there are so many unique things that allowed that to happen, but yeah, that was such a, a, a good time. We had a great time doing that. I remember, you know, Chad and I, we got a chance to overlap a few times and it just gave us a chance to work a little bit more closely, not only with the athletes, but with each other and just uh, kind of hone the way that we both kind of overlap our coaching. I think it's one of the things that Chad and I and, and the weightlifting and gymnastics side of Power Monkey have always done well. And things like the training grounds have always allowed us to kind of like, you know, spend a little bit more time together considering that we live on other sides of the country. It was such an awesome event. Uh, we always look forward to doing that. Well, plus, yeah. plus we met Chris Hinshaw there and he always tells That's right. training ground stories when we're together. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. I remember actually a story you, Austin, I think you're just legendary for your training mentality and the way that you kind of attack workouts. I remember being at the training grounds one day and I don't know, you know, you were, you and, and Connor were kind of running everything, but uh, you had kind of an off day or you were doing an active recovery day and mm -hmm. you decided to row a marathon on your <laughs> active recovery day. And it was like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> like, that uh -huh. it just like put into perspective what level athlete you were compared to normal human beings when your active recovery day was rowing a marathon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, gosh, I think that there are parts of my brain that have blocked those moments out. You know, it's like I'm like, oh yeah, we I did do that. We're like, you think you'd never forget it, but maybe mm -hmm. we, I, maybe your, your mind purposely forgets that. But uh, oh yeah, those were I just some of the days that we had out there. I just remember like because half the athletes were training in the morning, some at night. And since we were there all day, and like you said, Connor, I, we were just trained all day. Like, oh, well, yeah, can't let this person tra train alone. We'll join them. You know, like, <laughs> and it just, <laughs> that, that, that was the mantra for, for a couple weeks. And you guys were getting ready for the games too yourselves most of the time. So I don't That's know if right. that like wrecked you more than it actually prepped you. I don't know if it yeah. was a good thing for you specifically. We definitely wrote a fine line and not, not sure which side of the line that we ended on uh, towards the end of training grounds. That's for certain. Well, you've been in the community for basically since the inception, you, you're, you're uh, an, uh, you know, household name when it comes to CrossFit specifically on the coaching side and you become known as one of the top coaches uh, within the community. 
you've had such an influence on where the community going uh, in terms of the coaching side of things. And, you know, I've, I've seen that firsthand. Uh, you were my L1 coach over a decade yeah. ago uh, out in Jersey. And I, I remember yeah. clearly kind of uh, meeting you for the first time and uh, how you commanded the room and, and were so passionate about what was going on in the cross community even back then. And I think it's only grown since. And I think recently you've had some big changes come about within your life and um, kind of now your new position with CrossFit. Um, can you first talk about like just what coaching means to you in terms of how it pertains to the CrossFit community? Because I know, I know it's something special to you and, and how does the coaching side versus the athlete side kind of distinguish itself kind of in your mind? Yeah, gosh, that's a, that's a great question. And, and I, and, and I, I too remember that level one at the old CrossFit Morristown location yep. down the hill. Yep. And, and I'll never forget, we were in the second room when they had the second room and we taught, well, I taught the pull-up group and I was like, well, you know, we have uh, Dave here. So why don't we have uh, Dave show us the old, you know, the old, the old kip swing, you know, and, and that stuff. I'll never forget, you know, having the opportunity to have, <laughs> but I, I've never done that like since in my coaching career. I was like, well, we have someone who's the best in the world at this. Let's have them demo. I'm not sure if we could do any better. So that, that, was, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was a fun moment. I appreciate um, that. Yeah. Um, you, know, you know, so I think for me, coaching in CrossFit, it, it's, it's, um, it's synonymous. Um, and, and what I mean by that is it's the, for, for all, you know, the journey for a lot of us that, that come into CrossFit, you know, we start out in some way, shape or form an athlete. And, and what I mean by that is you do a workout and you do a CrossFit workout and you're like, wow, you know, and oftentimes it's a, it's sort of a 50, 50 experience. I don't like this. I like this. I hate it. I love it type mm -hmm. of feeling. And cause it, it, you know, specifically for a lot of us that came into CrossFit with just a traditional workout background, right. Where it's just, you know, going to the gym, somewhat monotonous, very, you know, movements that were, have always been the same. And now you're just doing these things that, you know, you've been told they're maybe dangerous or you don't know what they are. Right. And, and then it consumes you to the point where I love it. And then, and then from there, the, the transition is, I want to maybe coach this or I have, you know, and, and, and then you start to go down this coaching path. And, and so I, that's one of my favorite aspects. Very rarely do people come into and, and coaches specifically come in a CrossFit and just say, I don't know what CrossFit is, but I want to be a coach. Mm -hmm. It starts out in this very organic progression. And that's something that I, and I love that because it's, it's a true natural progression where, I mean, if you think about normal careers, it's like, Oh, you, you know, you, you, you start a job and it's your, you know, your first day on the job might be the first day in that field of experience where in, in CrossFit, you've been in a community or a gym or 15 years ago, we were following CrossFit.com and doing the workouts, you know, to the best of our ability and watching small grainy videos on how to do an air squat and what a muscle up is. Right. And, and, and that, and that's where the, the level one comes into play is that, you know, for me, level one changed my life. And I'll never forget that. And there are so many parts about the level one that changed my life from these inspiring trainers that were talking about fitness, that were living the lifestyle. I'll never forget, you know, a CrossFit OG, he did, oh, and he's still a flow master in, in Garden City is De Dennis Marshall. I, I just remember him deadlifting barefoot because that was what we did back then, right? We were, we were vibrant five fingers or barefoot, mm -hmm. right? And it's, um, you know, we've come a long way, but, you know, and I remember it was like, you know, he was deadlifting like 405, right? And like, this was 12, 15 years ago almost. And like, it just blew my mind. I was like, this, this dude's amazing. And then doing butterfly pull-ups. I didn't even know what these things were. And, and, and then they're talking about nutrition and, and all this stuff. And it was just things that I'll never forget. And, and that really led, it, led, led me down the path to do, you know, to not only compete, but then to, I was personal training prior, changed my methodology saw the result. I mean, that was the biggest thing is that, man, this works. I want to share this with other people. It's such an effective methodology. And, and why would I, why would I want to do anything else? Like it, it didn't make any sense to me. Um, and, and then, and, and look at where CrossFit is now at all around the world. I mean, you, you both have traveled around the world, no matter where you go, it's, it's clear that human movements, the common language, and that the red thread is this community where you can walk into any gym, no matter what language they speak. And, you know, you're a part of their community and CrossFit ties that together. And we all have such a similar origin story when it comes to CrossFit. And I think that's, and, and it is the epicenter is coaching, right. And, and, and what, and what we do and why we do it. So that's why I'm so passionate about it. And, you know, 
in my new role at CrossFit as, you know, in you know, the, the fancy job titles, director of uh, U.S. gym operations and, you know, and, and what that means, you know, to execution is taking care of our gyms, taking care of our affiliates. And, you know, if, if it pull back that, that journey, it's, you know, we, I started just training people one-on-one, right. And that's taking care of one person and then coaching group classes, owning an affiliate, then, you know, running seminars for me, it's, it is a progression of how do I help and support a community I love so much. So it's, it's, and that's, it's that nice progression. I think we all go on and, and, you know, similar, you know, for, for both of you of, you know, now you have, you know, you had your, your own athletic career. Now look at how many people you, you're able to influence and affect in, 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 in your different, you know, your forums, their different mediums and, and coaching's that red thread and, and it be, and it's a selfless journey, right? Because you start being selfish as an athlete. That's why I always tell people like when you're an athlete, you're selfish by design. Mm-hmm. You ha- you have to be, it's, I mean, you, you know, certainly when it's, to you, you know, you're, you're on the platform, you're on the mat, you're, you, 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 wherever it might be. And that's that it's you. And then you make that transition, which for all of us is not never an easy one of when, when, it, when is it no longer about me? And is it about others? And that's, and that's where, where, where coaching really steps into play. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And, you know, that it's a difficult transition, but when you fully accept it, it can be one of the great things in your life to be able to give the gift of what you've learned and pass it along to someone else. And, you know, you, you've been, uh, you mentioned it briefly, but, you know, you've been an affiliate owner for many years. Are you still um, running or assisting at all with uh, the gyms back on the East Coast and, and One Nation and things like that? Or are you full time kind of completely focused on your position with CrossFit? Yeah, so, so. I still own, so I, we have two locations for across at one nation. And so I still own those gyms with a partner, uh, but very, very move, removed from daily operations. So I'd be remiss to say that, you know, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm rolling up the sleeves and in the trenches, um, mm-hmm. so, you know, for, you know, by, by no means am I on, on that front. Um, and really when I running Reebok cross one for the last 10 years, uh, and then when, you know, when I transitioned to my new role was really when I started, I transitioned out of coaching consistently. Um, so bittersweet, right. Um, uh, from the sense of being on the floor all the time, but it's like, like I said, I find sanctuary in the, the transition of same goal, just, you know, of helping and supporting just now, hopefully reaching more people than, you know, than, than that, than that gym. So it's, but it's really important too, certainly in my role is to be plugged into the affiliate community because you can't take care of gyms without understanding them. And the affiliates are so unique. Um, and you guys know, you've been to, you go to 10 different affiliates, they're 10 different businesses, right? Mm-hmm. There's, they're 10, you know, and, and that's something where is being on the road for the last 10 years too. And, and going to all these different gyms, you learn so much about that, where my gyms are great. I love them, but that's my gym. And that's a, that's a small echo chamber if I never get out of that. So mm-hmm. it's, uh, but it's, yeah, definitely not coaching, you know, by no means coaching day to day. It's, uh, I'm a, the least I've coached is in the past six months in, in the past, you know. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, you have this new position now of director of us uh, gym operations. And yeah. uh, it seems like over the past year, since uh, new CEO Eric Rose has come in, there's been some significant changes and a little bit of different direction in terms of where CrossFit is going to go now. You know, it's, it's built this army of followers and now how do we take it to the next phase of um, you know, into the next decade beyond. And I'm curious from your perspective, uh, what Eric has done that you've seen to be a really positive change, and then also this new position for yours. What do you what do you see as being the main goal of this 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 role? You're talking about kind of a connection to the affiliates, but can you go a little bit deeper in terms of what you're hoping to accomplish with the role? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let me start with so, sort of with, with the with what Eric has done with his leadership and the new leadership he's brought in, and I think it's. I think the most powerful thing that I've seen, and, and it's directly obviously affected me, is that I'm I mean, I'm there now working in, in, in a role that didn't exist, you know, before and, you know before I got there, is the the commitment to really support our community, not as if the community wasn't being supported before, but to to double down even more into that, um, you know, because you know it, it's it's just that an investment, right, and. It's when, when you, we have a huge gym community, we have a, a, a huge cohort of followers that have been through our courses, 
the, the CrossFit games. I mean, if we think about really the three pillars of where we have the most touch points, right? We have sport and the games, we have our education and we have our affiliates and, and bringing that organization of, well, how do we support each, each of those things? Cause there's off of that, there are many more tentacles, right? Those are just the generalizations. Um, and, and something that, that Eric has said a lot and it's been on record about is, you know, reaching a hundred million people, like having a hundred million people do CrossFit. Mm-hmm. And I think, and that to me is, I'm, I'm a huge fan of like these big, hairy, audacious goals, uh, you know, and, and that's obviously an aggressive goal. But if we think about how is that achieved, it's through growing our affiliates, growing the individuals that are out there just, you know, coaching people, growing, you know, how do we reach that many people? Where are the p- places around the world that don't have access to, to CrossFit, to fitness, um, you know, and because there are a lot of places where CrossFit is still very small, right? So the globalization is very important because, you go around the world, as you know, it's like, it's a lot different than when you go to certain places in the States where like in Massachusetts, Boston, you know, you, you turn around, you're in a new gym, right. And, and they're all full, right. Which is, which is wild. It's not the case everywhere. Um, so I think that's the, the, the biggest thing. And then just the, the commitment to, to listening and hearing, you know, I think we all know that last year was hard for the CrossFit community. Um, and, and on many fronts, I mean, it was hard for the, the community, the world in general, um, you know, and then the gym industry and then the CrossFit industry, even more specifically. Right. So and I think just supporting and, and, and listening, and that's really dovetails into my role and what, what I see is what my purpose is and what the end goal is. You know, the, when I first came in, you know, the first thing I wanted to do was just to reach out and try to talk to as many affiliate owners and, and, and gym owners that I, I could have in a different capacity. Right. So I've, I've had the fortunate ability to do over 400 seminars in the past 10 years right so mm-hmm. i've talked and met with a lot of coaches and gym owners but you know it's when when you're talking to a business owner about business and about the support and you know not about what you are happy with but what could have been better and what could be better those conversations are challenging um and we probably all had those conversations about, you know about certain things and it's never easy to just hear things that you know, how you, you know, I wish you did this or this could be better. And, and because for me, the goal is to support our affiliates. So the end goal is for, I want every one of our CrossFit affiliates to be excited and energized about being a CrossFit affiliate, like, like they were on day one on at, like at the end of that level one, right. Where, when you're like, this just changed my life, I'm going to affiliate because I want to go do this and share this with others. And there's a lot of things that go into that because when you run a business for a year or 10 years, things change and Mm -hmm. support needs to change where, you know, that how we can support and help needs to evolve. And that's something where, you know, it's, uh, you know, when did, you know, so I'll just let this out of the bag. We'll announce this tomorrow. So hopefully uh, this doesn't air within the next, you know, (laughs) 10 minutes. Um, But um, you know, so we'll, we'll, we're going to release a playbook as an example, right. An affiliate playbook. And it's just a, if we think about the cross at level one manual for, for training, this will be that, that level one manual for owning an affiliate. Mm. And, and so this is something that, and, and what, since we are so deep into the world of, of cross, we have some of the best gym owners in the world that have done this for 10 years. We've pulled upon the, those gym owners. What have you learned? What have you mm. done from onboarding, from starting your gym to just general business operations, to marketing, branding, you name it. And, and just, and, Hold that in from all different types of gym owners because um, go to 10 different gyms, they can do things 10 different ways and be very successful. And, and that's, that's another piece of this is never changing that affiliate model that we love so much, which is, you know, Hey, if, you know, Chad, you have a gym and Dave, you have a gym, you could do really whatever you want. If there's a few things you need to do to be an affiliate, but then from there, how you run your business is up to you. And, and that's something that we want to make sure that we give tools as opposed to rules, right? Mm-hmm. And and that's a and that's a big a, a big mantra for us. So that's something that we we st- we're starting with that playbook as an example of all right. Well, we want to give support, and and then from there, what are all these other types of offerings we can deliver that that you're not obligated to use, but we want to at least have that out there. It's like, hey, here's our plan reach out and grab it, then, then, we, then we're here to help and support. And this is just the start of that, of that support network and that growth where, you know, for our 10 year affiliates, 
you know, it, the, the support we have to give them is very different than our free affiliation affiliates. Like, you know, like, hey, you're thinking about affiliating. How do we support you in that journey all the way through, you know, signing, you know, your, your affiliation papers? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Austin, you're making me want to be an affiliate again. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and I mean, and that's honestly, you know, and, and there are a lot of gyms that have left CrossFit in the past year for, for many reasons. And, and I, you know, I, I always say I define success as how do we, you know, we want those gyms to say, it's a no brainer for me mm-hmm. to affiliate, you know, and, and to be a part of this. And, and, and then for, for new affiliates, we have, to, I want to make that, we want to make that journey so much easier and smoother. And, and again, if, if that is something that the individual wants, I think that's something that we'll always stick true to is we're a contrarian culture by nature, right? So, I mean, and that's something that I would say a lot of affiliates, if not all, we're drawn to. It's like, I'm going to run the business the way I want to run it. I don't mm-hmm. want you to tell me what to do. Mm-hmm. I want to do it. And, and, th- and that's always going to be there. Um, but you know, I also would have loved help, right? Like it's just, yeah. you know, it's like sort of like that dichotomy of like, like, you know, gosh, I hate you, mom and dad, but I love you, mom and dad type of thing, right? Like it's, you know, I need your help, but I sometimes just want to push you away in, in the same vein, right? So it's, we, we expect that relationship to kind of be forever. <laughs> yep, for sure. Now, I got to ask one of the things that you mentioned, I'm very interested in numbers. You talked about that goal of uh, 100 million individuals being CrossFitters, doing CrossFit. And a big part of that is supporting the affiliates so they can obviously bring more people in and expose it and everything else. Do you have the current number of one? I mean, I don't know if you have these numbers, but a number of affiliates in the world and number of current CrossFitters in the world. Yeah. So I think the, so the, the, the short answer is yes. And the generalization of, I don't, I don't have like that the actual CrossFitter number. I know we're working on that um, and by getting more data. Like, so we have level one trainers and like what, you know, with uh, credentials that are current and expired and things like that. For, you know, for affiliates around the world, uh, about 12,500 gyms, mm-hmm. um, which is kind of where we sit now. Um, and that's like, you know, rough. That's sort of like the, that 10,000 foot view. Right. Um, and so, you know, so, so with that said, you know, I think it's, if you could average out there, like, you know, say 200 members per gym, which just might be a little high, you know, just, yeah. you know, even one, 150, um, things like that. So you can mm-hmm. probably have a, an idea of what that looks like. And, and then the level ones, like, gosh, I, I actually kind of forget that number, but like, even if you take in like credentials that have since expired, it's a very big number, you know, mm-hmm. like right. it, it's a very big number. I, I mean, like I look at like my dad, like I think he went through his level one and, you know, I think, you know, he, it expired last year, right? Last year was, it, you know, it's hard to get to his level one. It's like, he's still doing CrossFit and, you know, but mm-hmm. you know, so we, we have a lot of those too. For sure. Now, will you be yeah. coaching level ones anymore in this new position or do you holding off on that? So, yeah. So I think, the, the yes, but not as much. So like, right. You know, I'm not as consistent and by any means as I used to be. So, um, definitely focused on, you know, my, what I'm doing with, you know, home office in my role, but, um, which is kind of nice. I like kind of pulling back a little bit as well. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, you know, being on the road for 10 years, um, yep. it's, you know, it's very, it's, it's just different too. Like, um, and, and also being in, in this role where it fortunate, you know, it just, it's, when you look back, like running a gym is great. And it also allowed for me to travel on the weekends, right. Just cause like the flexibility of the hours and, and, and with the staff and things like that, where this it's, you know, I don't necessarily have that flexibility like I did just because of the nature of, of the role and the responsibility. So, you know, and it's, you know, it's also nice because it, and it works out well. Like my, I have a, a three-year-old daughter. It is, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to like, you know, play with her mm-hmm. on the weekends, you know, and like, sure. you know, things like that. So there, there are those things that, you know, it's, whereas before working seven days a week for 10 years was, yeah. like, why wouldn't I do that? Right. Why wouldn't I just work every day? You know, so now it's a, it's nice to have a, that little bit of a, a of separation. Yeah, it's a, it's really an unbelievable amount of seminars that you've done. When I really think about that, I mean, I've done a lot of clinics through the years, but nowhere even it's a very small percentage of the number of gyms and the number of days that you've put in on the road. And it's mind blowing to me to think about you are going to the CrossFit Games in the middle of all that as well. It's it's yeah. it's, 
you know, incredible. It just, it shows your, your physical ability and your mental capacity to just kind of relax through all that. You know what I'm saying? If that was stressing you out any at all, there's no, seems like there's no way that you would have been able to continue training and, and competing. It's awesome. Yeah. You know, it's, um, I think there, there's, there's a lot of fortunate things to that one starting in 2009, 10 competing was a lot different. Um, and it was almost a natural, like linear progression of adding volume, adding stress at, uh, cause in the beginning it was like, you know, the games were just a lot different and the demands of training were a lot different, but everything sort of just ramped up naturally from training to working to traveling on seminars where it, it wasn't like if, if, and I tell a lot of younger coaches and athletes this now it's, it just would, will never be what it was because the sport and CrossFit was starting where, I mean, I just look at like, you know, I worked a seminar here or there in the very beginning because we just didn't have as many seminars. Right. And so, mm -hmm. and then over time that ramped up to 40 weekends a year, that didn't just happen at the drop of a dime. It, it, right. it, there was that, that progression, you know, even just training volume. We don't, I mean, we were just doing dot com because that's all there was really back then. And, you know, someone would tell you what workout they were doing. You do it. You follow some lifting program because you wanted to get stronger. And, you know, there's a, a million lifting programs out there. You know, like we didn't know what we were doing. We had no idea what we were doing. And, you know, and then we all, you know, over time it, and it, it became less, it was less like, cause it's super like calculated scientific now, but more or less it was like, Rich is doing another workout. I got to do another workout. <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, right. that's all it became. It just became a bunch of like, you know, all of us are competitive. We don't want to get beat. So you just started like kind of one up in one another, not because of anything other than like, Oh, I, I got to keep up. And, you know, for better or for worse, I think it worked out a little bit in the beginning, um, mm -hmm. you know, where we, we were able to slowly add volume on make mistakes, but learn where now it just, it takes a little more, uh, you know, you have three or five years that you're not going to compete. You're going to train to get to the, your competition level where, in, you know, I trained for less than a year and made it to the games in 2010, you know, where, you know, you know, unless you are a very, very special athlete, which I am not, um, you know, you're going to be making it now, you know, it's going to be challenging to make it where uh, even Matt, you know, our, you know, Matt Frazier, I mean, he, his first year, he trained for what, like a few months and he, he was like, he almost made it, you know, but he, mm -hmm. I remember regionals in the Northeast. I was like, no one knew who he was all of us had been competing and he, I remember it was the seven rep max overhead squat from the ground and which was, and he did like three fifteen, And back then this was like in 2014, I think was when he, like the, the year before he went to the games, we're like, well, who is this animal? Like, cause three fifteen <laughs> even now, is, but like back then was like, mm -hmm. there was two guys that were doing that. <laughs> and, you know, so, so we knew he was something special. And then the next year he went, Right. And, and, and the rest is history. So, you know, and that's a good, and, and we all know how gifted he is. Yeah. Do you, do you think there's, it's possible for any human to do just com at this point and make it to the, the CrossFit games? And then also what, what are your thoughts on the current level of these athletes? I mean, there's so much, we've talked to so many young youth athletes right now that are just right there going toe to toe with the best in the world um so i think to answer your first question no i don't think you can just do dot com and make it to the games and that's just it and, and to be honest with you i mean that's like you know in that's that that's really not the purpose of dot com right right um now do i think that you know every athlete that's competing should keep a, as close of an eye on dot com as possible absolutely right i mean it just sort of makes sense right mm -hmm. keep your eye on the you know, the nebulous of who is programming the event that you want to win or compete in, right? Mm -hmm. There are, you know, and Dave's always been open, know your history, right? Yeah. So, you know, that's very, it's a very important piece. You now, and, and, and with that said, it, it's also a testament to the level of athletes, you know, and something that Dave has always said, and it's something I'll never forget is the games that, you know, they're not workouts, they're events. And there's a difference. Mm -hmm. And, and I, and, and I think, you know, both of you understand the difference between events and workouts. Yep. And, and so, and, and the, and the events need to challenge push and, and, and sometimes find the, the limits 
of the best in the world, right? That's very mm-hmm. important. And, and, and that's something that I think that Dave and the CrossFit Games don't get enough credit for is what that has done to the athletes. Because without that, we wouldn't be here today with the level of athletes that, that we're seeing and, and the caliber. And, and, and not to put all of the, you know, it's not like, well, what Dave and the games have done is, is solely responsible for, but we all need a North star. We all need that. And, and that's what those events become. And, and it's okay to see the best in the world struggle and fail. And I think sometimes mm-hmm. the critics will like, you know, critique that, but like, what's, well, that's part of the process of threshold training, right? Like it's, you know, and unfortunately, even among the best, there are still, the best of the best, right? And, mm-hmm. and, and having that separation is important. But I think what that's created is you're just, I mean, it's, it's so unbelievable to see the capacity of athletes that we're seeing, and, you know, and, but I, I think it's important to know that with that, the professionalization and, and the level of this going up, we're going to see careers shorter and we're going to see, you know, it just because the, the pounding that it takes and the, and the toll that it takes, it's just like anything, right? Like, you know, if you're going to burn hotter and faster, you can't, it's not going to last as long, right? Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a, you know, you're always going to have the outliers, right? You're going to have those and in any sport, but, tr- you know, generally speaking, you're going to see the, the careers a little shorter. Um, and I, t- I, I try to tell athletes that as well. Like, you know, just be mindful that there's, there's a lot more than just, you know, thrusters and pull-ups and burpees and in, in, in within the CrossFit ecosystem and just know your sacrifices and know, you know, where you're putting priorities because having that understanding is very important. So I, I want to make clear that you, you mentioned Dave a few times and you're not talking about me, uh, <laughs> listeners out there. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Dave, Dave Castro. Castro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'm not writing the programming for the CrossFit Games. Uh, good but thing. Yeah, it would be the, nothing but handstand walks and handstand you know it, push-ups you know and yeah, handstand you know holds. <laughs> which, which we see a lot of. Yeah. You know, it's like we, we don't see a shortage of high-skilled gymnastics at the Games, which is fun, right? Well, the handstand yeah. hold that was put in last year made my, my whole year. I was so happy to finally see that put in there. But, yeah, Dave Castro does an amazing job putting it all together. Um, we've been talking about all the great changes that we're seeing within CrossFit, you know, uh, that bring you on board. and where CrossFit's going to be going now that Eric's on board. I want to ask you something that may be a little bit more challenging to answer just with regards to what do you see as the biggest flaw or the biggest mistake or challenge that CrossFit ha- is, is trying to overcome? What, what do you see as the, the hardest thing that CrossFit is trying to overcome right now? Not all the great things, but uh, more, what's the, what's the biggest challenge that you see from your perspective, your seat right now where you're sitting, not from the coach's side from prior when you're at Reebok, but now specifically while being in the seat as a CrossFit um, uh, employee. Yeah, gosh. I, I mean, that's a, a really good question. And I think to to pin down sort of, so, and, and almost like, I, and I'll almost keep it into my world of, of, of affiliates and what that looks like is how, the biggest challenge that we have, and, and this is a, a historical challenge, is how do we support and help our affiliates with the with the challenging notion of the preconceived notion that you know I don't I can't do CrossFit or CrossFit's not for me. The the sort of you know, so many people are met with ambivalence when it comes to starting, right? Of uh, I I want to do it, but I feel like I, I shouldn't, or I can't, there's something holding back. And I think that's one of our biggest challenges um, for a, a, a few reasons, right? One, we have this, this North star of the CrossFit games and it's just human nature to see the best in the world, the elite of the elite and, and be, and be like, wow, that's cool. I can't do that. Right. It's easy to, 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 to hear that. Now, the, for the those that can under you know look behind the veil a little bit, well, we know CrossFit's universally scalable and applicable to anyone, and no matter what physical or psychological limitations you have, you can be taken care of. But how do we make that universally known and understood, right? So, and it's a unique challenge because you know it's it's there is a level of education, and and then in turn we also how do you do that because fitness in general is is a very emotional journey for people right where just stepping foot into a gym waking up 
or staying up later to get a little workout. And these are huge life changes. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a psychological process that we need to insert ourselves in, in the individual. Um, and I think that's our biggest challenge because it's easy to see someone doing the handstand and saying, that's crazy. I can't do that. It's easy to see someone doing an Olympic lift and saying that's dangerous because Mm -hmm. you were taught at some point in your life that a barbell is dangerous or weightlifting is dangerous or, you know, weightlifting, certain people shouldn't be doing this stuff. And those are things that for some reason are ingrained into a lot of us at an early age, right? Like Mm -hmm. it would, you know, and I don't even know why, but it is, but people think that and feel that. So that's one of our biggest challenges. And and, and in turn, the reason why it's super relevant to us is because that will really support all of our affiliates and the success, getting more people to feel comfortable. So I think that's, and that's, that's one of the biggest things in, in the messaging and, but also and, and when we, when we, when we leverage the games, you know, balancing that out with these stories, right? Like, I mean, I think that like, we, we all know people that their lives have been changed by CrossFit. So you know, how do we start to, you know, how do we share those in a palatable way for those that aren't doing CrossFit, right? Where, you know, we all know that the, the, the joke that if you do CrossFit, you know, everyone knows, cause you don't shut up about it. There's a huge mm-hmm. truth to that. Right. So, you mm-hmm. know, we, we have a, 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 a nice internal marketing system, but we, I think we just need to uh, you know, overcome that, that piece there. And I mean, that's been there since I started, um, but the biggest difference too, and I, you know, I think both of you know this, is that 10 years ago, you'd say CrossFit and people are like, what's that? I've never heard of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, we, people are like, oh yeah, I know someone that does it. Or, mm-hmm. or you know, you, you have that. So it, it's a progression. Sure. Right? You know, sure. for sure. Yeah, it's definitely much more mainstream. You can go anywhere in the world and you're going to find, you know, people wearing Metcons. You're going to be finding people wearing the apparel, wearing the gear. Um, That's right. And you, you mentioned there something that I think is pretty critical, the education side. And I feel like this is kind of where you're going to be making your biggest impact uh, with something you've unveiled pretty recently. And I'd love to talk to you a little bit more about it because it seems like it has kind of a two prong approach and it fits in really well with kind of the methodology that, you know, Chad and I speak to endlessly when on the Power Monkey side. But uh, the new CAP program, the CrossFit affiliate programming that yeah. uh, you've had a, a pretty significant hand in. Uh, developing and just being released recently. Can you talk a little bit about what CAP program is and what you're hoping to do with it in terms of uh, how it's going to be disseminated to the affiliates? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so it's, it's near and dear to my heart. So, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, CAP, you know, CAP has a foundation of what was previously, you know, my, my and James Hobart, Spencer Hendel and Travis Herbenex company, the Ham Plan. Um, so we were acquired by CrossFit and to really lay the foundation for, the the re, the educational resource that is cap and i think that's and that and that really is to answer your question even deeper dave is crossfit affiliate programming is is obviously programming and it is focused for the affiliate but that is sort of the one of the smallest aspects of what what we're delivering it's it's an education resource and coaching development tool and and the purpose of that is, and, and this is, and this is going back to really what, when, when we really honed in on our vision and focus at the hand plan is a workout's great, but useless unless it's implemented correctly. We need to deliver tools to the coaches, affiliate owners, and their staff to help them implement that workout as best as we can. So they, they can deliver to the best they can. So their members can have the best experience and then reach the ultimate goal of programming is to yield results right and so if, if we the end of that journey is always the end goal we want to get our people fitter keep them healthier and they should be having an enjoyable time you know and throughout that process but you have to pull that all the way back to well how are we doing that right mm-hmm. so and so you know the, the the main cornerstone of the product is we have class plans and 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 from a resource perspective you were just think about what would you want or need to execute a class, our goal is to deliver that to you. And that's really what we've done over the past handful of years is always, hey, we're going to deliver this, ask you for feedback. What would you like? How do we tweak it to make it better, more, more usable, more user-friendly? Because you know every gym is different. Every class is different. So the, there's only one way to solve that, which is provide as much tools, as many tools as you can, but in a, 
in a way that can be received that's palatable. Because if I have a 10-year veteran coach and then a, then a coach that's brand new, if I'm going to give them the same tool, that has to be a really good tool, right? So I look at it like, you know, the, the iPad is a good example where my two and a half year old can work an iPad. It's amazing. Like, but we also have professionals leveraging it for their, you know, to do amazing things that are, you know, I can even imagine, right? So like it's, so that's a tool that can be used by a two and a half year old and then, then, and, and a astrophysicist, double PhD rocket scientist, right? And it's still find use. And that's the, that's what our goal is for the class plan is all right. So I'm, I'm that two and a half year old. I don't, I just finished my level one. I'm starting to intern, but I'm going to look at this and I can read this and follow it word for word, verbatim, minute by minute timeline, clear scaling options, logistical considerations, injury considerations, what I'm going to say at the whiteboard, right? All of those types of things, all the way mm. to, hey, here's some just highlighted points of our goals and focuses for our salty vets. And, you know, these are some things, the red threads that we want to see through all the classes. Let's keep that consistent. Here are some, some thought starters. That's a good general warm up, right? I need some inspiration because I've done 7,000 general warm ups. I wouldn't, I'd like not to worry about that today or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. And, and that's just, and that's just within the class plan. And, um, and, and then kind of to that is how do we, how do we help affiliates really understand? Well, like, you know, cause everyone's like, what, what makes your program different or better? And I think it's, well, the coaching does, right? Like it's the coaching is what separates. I mean, if I'm, you know, teaching the clean and jerk or the snatch, right. You know, Chad said, well, how you coach that is what separates that experience from, you know, some, you know, from someone else that's just getting, you know, watching a video online. Right. And, and that's where, and that's the, our goal is to make that experience explicit. But then from an affiliate perspective, 10,000 foot view is there's a lot more than just class, right? People like, so from, Hey, I want an extra workout to, do you have an at home version? I'm traveling to have a lifting track, like all of these things. So the, the other you know, sort of resources, if a member asks you something about, uh, from a programming perspective, we won't be, you know, we'd like for it to be able to give you as, as, at least most of the answers. So you don't have to worry about it, right? Because part of this too is if you're going to, if you're going to be partaking in the service, we should make your life as easy as possible. So like we offer weekly um, extra workouts, right? Because we know there's maybe 10% of your gym that are the workout animals that just always want to do extra stuff and might as well give them direction, something that, that dovetails nicely with the week. Everyone loves to lift, at least they think they do when they want to, right? So have, you know, have, having, having some sort of guided program there that's just you know, also gentle, right? I think another thing is volume is, is a really easily misused tool. Um, and but, so how, how do you give people what they want without blasting them into another universe, right? Like, it's like, yeah, we know linear periodization works. You can follow a hatch or a small off and it's probably going to work. You just might not walk you know, you know, after, after mm. now at the end of that, you know, to some degree. So, you know, I think that's, uh, that's something that is, you know, really one of our focuses when it comes to the, 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 the volume accumulation is it's, it's gotta be smart. 99% yeah. of people want, you know, they want to look good naked. They want to feel good. We also want to make sure that people are healthy as well. Sure. Right. Sure. So all of that comes into play with, you know, with, with CrossFit affiliate programming, and, and lastly, I think for me, it's, and I'm old schoolers. I went to CrossFit for the workouts. Like I, I didn't know where else to go, right? Like 2009, you go to CrossFit.com if you want to do a CrossFit workout. Mm-hmm. Now I'll be, you know, and, and so now, you know, my goal is to sort of like bring, bring, bring you back to CrossFit, right? And, you know, it's a sort of, um, it's always been a dream of mine. So this, this, this coming together is that, you know, on August 15th is actually when the affiliate programming will sync with um, .com. So the, the dot com workout will be the same as affiliate program. Mm. Now, obviously, with some affiliate, will always be tailored to the gym seven days a week. Um, we're not, you know, we love sw- you know, obviously swimming's great, but we're not swimming at, you know, our gyms. So, so dot com will always have that beautiful kernel of variance that sometimes makes you raise an eyebrow, but that's the like very vari- with variance is important. The affiliate will always be tweaked and then therefore properly applied for our gyms, but. We'll have that DNA of the uh, of .com, which is really cool, um, you know. So, 
and and then just the the overall the overall perspective of it's still optional as well. You know, it, people always kind of get stressed out about that. Where like we actually purposely didn't include it in the affiliate fee. You know, and a lot you know people are like, well, why didn't you? It's like, well, we still want gyms to make their choice. Mm-hmm. If you love to program, or if you want other programming, mm-hmm. we respect that and want that market to still exist. So that's why we're you know we'll charge for it starting next year. It and and the price that we'll land on will be you know be well within the range of the other programs out there because we also respect the marketplace and we and, and there are other programs and businesses out there that are successful we don't want to come in and just completely flip it upside down from a price perspective um mm-hmm. but really more importantly giving gyms the choice as always to mm-hmm. leverage this tool or not right so th- those are and and that's from where the hand plan came came to be and where we are now the resources that we have with CrossFit, that's the most exciting piece, right? Where sure. we can we can tap into this mm-hmm. educational ecosystem that is unparalleled. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's something that we're, you know, that's always been the dream. It, you know, as any coach, as any program, you've always want to give more, right? Mm-hmm. But you you can never overcommit and underdeliver. And you're, you're always bound by your resources. And when you're a smaller business, you have to really evaluate what you can do and what you can deliver um, that makes sense. And so now that we have this, this you know, behemoth of CrossFit training, it's really cool. And some of the best trainers in the world that are on seminar staff, you know, we can start to leverage them re- you know, where, before we could. And so that's, th- those are the exciting you know, you know, future goals as we grow and evolve. Yeah, well, congratulations on that i mean it's an incredible feat to be able to um not just put programming together because i think that's something that's been done but the thing that kind of really sticks out to me because i think chad can echo this too is uh the coaching resources Mm because we we view ourselves as uh resources as well to be able to help coaches become better coaches and how how do we give the little nuggets on uh, the technical pieces of some things that you know we've over our lifetimes as athletes and coaches been able to refine and understand cues and understand how people move and for you to be able to give resources within programming, that are not only for an athlete to become better, but also a coach to become better. I think that's really special and really unique. So kudos to you guys for being able to put that together. I'm really excited to be able to see how that comes together. But I'm curious what, what Chad thinks too, because for us, this is something that kind of hits close to home. Well, I will say as an owner and a coach, um, I used to be an owner somewhere along the way. Um, I think I recognized how much time I was spending on programming and I put my pushed my ego to the side and we did, you know, purchase programming from another source. And that was, yeah. I would say I made a lot of mistakes as an owner and, and, and a coach, but I would say that was one of the best decisions for me. So I love this kind of thing because it really does allow uh, owners and coaches to focus on really more what they're there for, which is to, to deliver an experience. And if you're having to spend a lot of time and energy on programming, you know, for me, it became something that was a hassle for me to put together kind of last minute on a Sunday before the week started on Monday. And it was this big thing that took away from, from family time and other things that I was trying to accomplish. And so I think this is a great resource. And and like you said, Austin, a tool for those uh, owners and coaches to use it if they want. But, you know, my question is, is there anything being done to, I don't know if the word is educate, but to make this type of thing known, like just because you're the owner, you don't have to program. Now, some, some owners out there, they love doing it and they're very good at it. And, and it's just a part of what they do. But I know that there's probably surely a lot of owners out there where it's overwhelming to them. And it's a, it's kind of a hassle and it's something that's taking away from other things that they're trying to do with their community. But I think there's always this voice in their heads feeling like they've got to be in control of that. And they, you know, it almost like they're going to be looked down on if they get programming from somewhere else. What are your thoughts there, Austin? Gosh, yeah, that's such a good point. Um, And I was actually talking to uh, 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 Craig Howard from Diablo CrossFit, and he brought up that same exact point. He said, you know, my what I really love about this and he, you know, he has and he has a programming business as well. It's like what I love about this is that with CrossFit doing this. It it's it says it sends a message that it's okay, mm-hmm. and if not encouraged to outsource your programming. Whereas to uh, you know, and so because there's always been that feeling that man, you know, is is outsourcing your programming, you know, sort of is it, you know, taboo? Is, is it something that you shouldn't do? Like st- a lot of gym owners that you know, certainly at the hand plan early on, we're like, we're not going to tell our gym mm-hmm. that 
we're outsourcing. Like they, they, they were, you know, we supported a lot of strategies on how to introduce it even, right? Like, you know, how are you going to introduce it? You're doing this. So I think now that we have a, a, a service, it actually legitimizes not only, you know, the wanting to outsource it, but also the other companies out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's something that, cause I've talked to some of the other programmers out there, you know, out of respect and, you know, I know a lot of them and, and I think that that's, that's, it's been brought up by a few of them. It's like, this actually could help business, mm-hmm. right. Where, you know, cause we're going to always have our, our style, which is CrossFit and every, other, other programs might have different flavors and flares and that's great. Um, but the, the purpose of this is to hopefully allow it for it to be okay to do that. Cause programming can be very ego driven too, right? We all know mm-hmm. that like, you know, it's the, and, and that's something that I've always loved about, you know, programming. Certainly when I was way more involved in the day-to-day programming with hand plan is that there was a few of us that were involved, which forced us not to have an ego in programming because we would just rip each other apart, give mm-hmm. each other feedback, um, not leaving your echo chamber of your world. And, um, and I think that one of our goals is educating the community on how, you know, what you're getting and even how long it takes to put these resources together. Mm-hmm. And I think because you hit on the time piece where like it's in order to put the minute you have more than one coach on your staff, your responsibility to them to deliver them resources and tools increases tenfold, if not 50 fold, mm-hmm. where if it's just you delivering every class not sustainable, but if it's mm-hmm. just you, you, you don't need it. You don't have to build out these, these lesson plans that need to be comprehended by others. You can have your personal notes and, and things to that measure. But I mean, it takes sometimes 10 to 20 hours a week to put all these resources together. That's a simple math equation on your, of, uh, on your time and how much it's worth. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, to, to validate the cost one from your own time, but then also where should your time be better spent? Right. Whether, yeah. you know, what, and, and, and that's, I, and I talk to, I say for new gym owners and you know it's, it's allows you to focus on your business or coach and do the things that, you know, we love and, and that arguably probably have more of an impact on your business specifically in the, in the beginning. And then for a lot of us, as we get older and we still do this, like, you know, maybe I would like to spend the week, this, my Sunday with my family. Mm-hmm. as opposed to programming or inputting things like okay. that. Right. You know, like, cause all of us know that have been on the grind that like Sundays or at some point on the weekend was the programming day was the inputting day. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and so it'd be nice to have that back. I mean, cause mm-hmm. yeah. And so those are things bringing that in perspective where it's, yeah, like that would be nice. But if you love to program and it's an art for you and it bring in it and it, and it centers you and brings you Zen, mm-hmm. do it. Right. Yeah. You know, and, you know, I even tell gym owners, follow this for a year or two. But then if you want to program for some time on your own, now you have a, a foundation mm-hmm. for you to kind of go like, but and so there's a lot of ways that you can, you can take it from that perspective. But I do think that the, the resources we want to deliver will also be educating the community on just that, that it's okay to do this. And the reality is our members don't care. They just want a good workout no mm-hmm. matter what, like, right. like, and, and cause it's not the workout, it's the coach that makes the difference. So it's, it's not the, the 21, 15, nine thrusters and pull-ups that gets them emotional and excited. No, it's the coach, mm-hmm. you know, so that's the linchpin and, and, and everything else from there just becomes, you know, noise, either good or bad. Well, Austin, I think we, uh, we can definitely have a part two on this. I know you got to head out pretty soon and I can't get you out of here until we, we get our last minute questions. in. so can we do some quick rapid fire ones before we get you out? Let's do it. Um, first, what sport or discipline do you prefer weightlifting or gymnastics? Uh, gymnastics. Come on. Oh, that was yeah, quick. That was a little too quick. You, you, you could know. have entertained me a little bit there. But. I, I know, I know, I know. It's just, it, I have a love hate with the snatch, you know, I mean, I yep. love it, but I hate it. So I'm still, I'm still, it's still emotional, soft, soft spot. <laughs> right. Right. I I'll understand. take it. Thank you. Thank you. Austin. Another one in my, uh, <clears throat> my box here. Second question. <laughs> Uh, any guests that you think would be great for us to have on the podcast? Oh, any guest? I think, I mean, may, maybe I'm just because I know him too well, but, uh, James Hobart, you know, we, 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 we tend to go back. So, mm-hmm. um, he is, and he's, and he's, we've had James on before. We can, we can probably get another one now that, uh, oh, yeah. his program's up and running. Yeah. You know, and, and maybe he's, you know, maybe people have heard too much of him, you know, so you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe give it some time. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, perfect. I, I'd love to talk to James again. And I think we're going to be talking to Connor pretty soon as well. So I'm looking forward to that too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, that's great. So it's, yeah, uh, yeah sure. that, that'll be, that'll be a fun one. Cause yeah, he's way more cool and exciting than I am. So that'll be fun. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about that, but um, any last few here, any books you've come across here recently that you'd recommend to the, to the listeners? Oh gosh. I'm, so the, the book I'm actually reading right now is it's the Jordan Peterson, the 12 rules of life or for life. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really, it's, and it's like, it's one of those, it's taken me a long time because he's so smart and it's overwhelming. And I, and I listen, I don't, I, I, I don't read. So for something like this, it's a little harder because it's, you know, I got to stop it and go back, but I'm a huge fan of it. Um, when I mow my lawn on, on the weekend, like mm -hmm. that's like, I get like an hour of that. Um, and, and so that's been one of my favorite ones. And then, Ray Dalio principles is also one of my favorites. Um, and he's become way more active on social media. So I think more people know of him. Uh, but that book I've read twice and nice. mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a double read for me. So it's, yeah, those are some, some of my favorites. We'll we'll add those to our, our long list as well. And we appreciate those recommendations. Now to wrap up here, Austin, where can folks keep up with you? When can they expect to uh, look out for the, the CrossFit affiliate programming? And do you have any parting words? Oh yeah. Yeah. So social media, uh, a Maliolo first, uh, first initial last name. I try to be as active as I can there. You can always hit me up. I try to respond to you know, messages and whatnot on there. Um, and then for the affiliate programming, you can go, just go to crossfit.com. And, and if you're an affiliate, um, you can sign up to be on the wait list and, and then, and then hop, you know, hop off the wait list as we, as we let people off each week. But yeah, so you have to be an, an affiliate in good standing, but that's the best way. And there's a website that, you know, a, a breakdown and all that good stuff, but those are the places to, uh, to either, you know, reach out to me or, or, you know, hop on the wait list. And you can always just shoot up uh, programming at crossfit.com and email if you have a question and our team will always get back to you pretty quick. Perfect. A lot of great resources there for sure. If you're an affiliate owner, I would urge you to check that out, especially if you've been uh, kind of battling with programming on your own for for a year or more or whatever it may be but um, as always we appreciate you listening in Austin it was awesome to have you certainly we need to do a part two to chat with you a little bit more just to have a have a chat in general I hope that we can run into you again uh, someday wow. soon but um, as always guys be sure to head over to powermonkeyfitness.com for services and upcoming events also check out our Instagram pages for regular teaching and technical content at Power Monkey Fitness, at Dave Durante, and at Ollie Chad. And on behalf of Power Monkey Fitness, we're your host. I'm Chad Vaughn with Dave Durante. Until next time, thank you all for listening. <laughs>